This video was brought to you by the ILC. Welcome back once again. This episode I want to talk to you a little bit more about the unit circle and introduce you to the concept of reference angles and how we use them. Let's get started. So our first question is, what is a reference angle? Put simply, our reference angle is our distance from the x-axis. And for now, we'll do this in degrees. So for the angles I have marked previously, the reference angles are simply the angles themselves. The 30 degrees is 30 degrees away, 45 is 45 degrees away, and the 60 is 60 degrees away, and the 90 is 90 degrees away. But let's look at what happens when we go into this next quadrant. The quadrant that we've marked the values for, we're calling quadrant 1 with a Roman numeral 1. Our next quadrant over here on the left we call quadrant 2. Now I've taken the liberty of marking down the angles that come up the most often here in quadrant 2. Let's start with the first line near the 180 degree marker. It's going to be located at 150 degrees. However, to get its reference angle, we must first take the 180, which is where the axis is, and subtract 150. One eighty minus one fifty gives us thirty degrees. So we can say the reference angle here at one fifty is actually thirty degrees. The reason why that's useful is that we can use the same numbers. So we can say our value at one hundred fifty degrees is still root three over two comma one-half. However, what we have to do is change the signs. Now, you might notice that here on the left, we should have a negative x value. So we can put a negative on the x value and have negative root 3 over 2. The y value, we can see, is still above the axis, so it's still positive. Now, let's continue and try to look at the other values. Now our next value is going to look an awful lot like 45 degrees. So we could say 180 minus 45, meaning this angle in this next line is going to be 180 minus 45 or 135 degrees. Let's mark it down. For the same reason, we could take 180 and say, well, what if we moved on to 60? 180 minus 60, 120 degrees. So what we'll say is that 135 has a reference angle of 45, and 120 has a reference angle of 60. So the position at 135 is almost the same as the position at 45. We still use root 2 over 2 on both x and y. The only thing that we change is to put a negative on the root 2 for the x value. And the same thing happens at 120. We simply use the numbers for 60. 1 half comma root 3 over 2 and put a negative on the x value. We can continue around the unit circle and look at these next set of lines in this quadrant, which we call quadrant 3, marked with a Roman numeral 3. The numbers that come up the most often are 210, 225, and 240 degrees. However, to get their reference angles, we figure out how far they are from the x-axis. In quadrant 3, we could do 210, minus 180, 225, minus 180, and 240, minus 180. 
Unsurprisingly, we get 30, 45, and 60 when we do the math. So we can say 210 has a reference angle of 30, so we can use the same numbers. Square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. But now, we can have a look at our position. We can see that we have a negative x and a negative y because we are below the axis and to the left. So both numbers become negative. For the same reason, at 225 degrees, we use a reference angle of 45 and use the numbers from 45. Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and make them both negative. And at 240, same thing, we use 60. We'll have 1 half, comma root 3 over 2, and put negative signs on the both. Finally, we'll have a look at quadrant 4. Roman numeral 4 here. The angles that come up the most often are 300, 315, and 330. So in quadrant 4, we could have a look at 300. We could just take the distance from the x-axis once again. The x-axis is located at 0, but we're going to use 360 this time to give us an angle that is somewhere in the first quadrant. We'll say 360 minus 300, giving us 60 degrees. Well, we'll just use the numbers from 60 degrees. 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2. But now, we are to the right side of the axis, so this x value will be positive, and the y value, since we're below the axis, will be negative. You might be able to predict that 315 would simply act the same as 45. Root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, with the y being negative and the x being positive. And 330 wouldn't look an awful lot like 30. Root 3 over 2, comma 1 half, with again the y value being negative. So what you'll find is that the same numbers on this unit circle keep coming up over and over again. The only difference is that in quadrant 1, x is positive and y is positive. When you move into quadrant 2, you get the same values based on the reference angle. The only difference is that x is negative and y is positive. In quadrant 3, you get the same cycle again, except for both x and y are negative. And in quadrant 4, x becomes positive again, and y is negative. You may also run into something of a strange situation where they give you an angle that is above 360 degrees. For example, what if they gave you 450 degrees? If that happens, just subtract 360. to get yourself back on the unit circle that you know. So we'll say 450 minus 360 would give us 90 degrees, and our answer would be our answer from 90 degrees, 0, 1. If your answer is still above 360, you could just continue subtracting 360 over and over and over again, since 360 is simply a full rotation around the circle. And you can do that as many times as you have to until you get back on the unit circle. So hopefully that introduces you to the idea of reference angles. The reference angle, one last time, is simply the angle between the x-axis and the angle you're looking for. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next episode.